Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Fiona Duff from the Transnational Institute. Fiona, good to have you with us. Thank you, Prabir. Europe is looking very interesting politically after a long time. Uh, we have had elections in uh, UK, we have had elections in France, Spain is having some interesting developments. Let's talk about France first. Do you think the left has really been able to pull itself up much more in the last two rounds of election before? Oh, no, absolutely. I think uh, uh, Mélenchon's new um, party, which I can't pronounce that well in French either, uh, but I think it's La France Soumise, which means um, France unbowed, France defiant. Hmm? Um, but they, they did very well in the election. Um, this is the parliamentary elections. The parliamentary elections, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the, the presidential elections, actually, they didn't do too badly either. Um, it was a big, that was the big news, was uh, the surprise of Mélenchon coming up. But also his party is inspired by Podemos and these other, uh, Bernie Sanders, you know, all, all these new kinds of politics we're seeing emerge. Um, so no, I found it. I found it very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I think do go. you see a resurgence of the left taking place in Europe now? Uh, after, for instance, what happened in Greece, there was this feeling that the left has again mm. gone down. Mm. So we have had Spain. Podemos didn't do that well as we expected, but we have had some interesting city elections, and we have had France, and of course we had the big one, Jeremy Corbyn in the uh, UK. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that that has. So do you think there is a, in that sense, a sense, a renewed sense that the left is coming back into European politics after some fairly long while? No, I think so. And my sense is there's a big uh, generational divide in Europe. And what you see, uh, particularly in Britain, uh, with the Corbyn phenomenon, but I think, I think we'll see it uh, increasingly, is young people. Um, wanting a new kind of politics, um, fed up with, you see the Social Democrats have been completely wiped out in, uh, uh, I mean they've lost tremendously in, in uh, well they will lose in Germany, but the polls indicate the Social Democrats will lose. Holland they're completely wiped out, <coughs> France completely wiped out, uh, so the youth want something different. Um, and, and they're mobilizing, um, and the Corbyn phenomenon is largely youth driven. I mean the, the divide has been primarily um, mm. under 40 and over 40. And it's also interesting that the social democracy, particularly the what would be called the Tony Blair, uh, Blairite movement, if, well, if you will, yeah. was to disempower the unions, disempower the yeah. local activists. They were neoliberal social democrats, yeah. Neoliberal social democracy internationally with all the military yeah. interventions in the world but yeah. also increasingly centering everything around the parliamentary party. And yeah. that is what Corbyn's uh, really drive has been, yeah. that yeah. the base of the Labour Party is what needs to be empowered. And that seems to have changed the relation in the party itself. No, and I think the other thing, and maybe the, the international media needs to be more careful with this, it's not about Corbyn, it's not about the individuals, like it shouldn't be about Bernie Sanders or, uh, or Mélenchon. No, it's, a, it's about the people. And uh, actually, what I wanted to mention was that uh, people should watch out for what's happening in Hamburg next weekend. Um, 7 and 8 July in Hamburg will be a uh, mobilization against the G20. And the slogan is the, is the British Labour Party slogan, we are many, we are loud, uh, and we will be heard. So I think um, tens of thousands of youth will come from all over Europe to, to Hamburg. The shell is spoiled. Yes, he, Corbyn's he favourite. Uh, yeah, he yeah, many. yeah, yeah. You saw the Glastonbury uh, yes. video clip. Yes. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, if you see this, uh, do you think in that sense the neoliberal shift of the social democracy, which had really derailed the left in Europe because social democracy was the leading left force in Europe for a long time. Yeah. Do you think that is now changing and you are going to see more, if I use the word, more radical politics, which questions the basis of the uh, current economic order itself emerging? I was thinking about that uh, last night uh, in preparation for today, but um, it might be overconfident to say a tipping point has been fully reached, but it is pretty much there. Uh, neoliberalism is pretty much delegitimated, de particularly among youth, I would say. But, but one has to qualify that a bit. Uh, and it's, it's, I think there's specificities in different, um, different countries in Europe. 
So in France, for example, I, I, I'm not entirely sure that that's uh, true among the, the youth. I think, I think it takes a different form. But in Britain, I think absolutely. And it's, you know, economic crisis since 2008, people's absolute disgust at the way the, the banks have been bailed out, how people had to, to pay for that with uh, social security. Uh, the refugee crisis is a big, that's been a big uh, uh, fault line, I think, between left and right. But no, I think, I think neoliberalism is pretty much on its way to, to absolute delegitimation. And I think the destruction of the, well, the, the loss of support for the social democratic centre-left. Second issue then, mm. that the destruction of the centre in this sense, which is both the liberal right and the liberal yeah, left. The, the centre is kind of collapsing. Yeah. Do you think the centre is collapsing? Therefore, uh, white nationalism of different kinds, white nationalism of what we saw in Le Pen, what you see Trump is an expression of. That's also on the rise, that we should also look at that very carefully. Yeah, well, uh, all the mainstream media attention has been on that, in fact. And I, I've yeah, I kept feeling, yeah, but the real story is the rise of the left, you know, but uh, no, but that's true. It's, uh, and, and what's, what's interesting, I think, is that the basis for both the far right and this, this new left um, phenomenon is similar. It's, it's anti-elite, uh, enormous resentment against uh, neoliberal policies. Um, yeah, a sense of betrayal by, by the elite and the elite also being seen as, as your kind of urban urban elite, so it's not just uh, the parties and the, and the, the political centres, but it's like also a, a dangerous, cultural matter. Dangerous parties, it's also looked upon as a cultural elite. Now, which includes the left, by the way. Which includes from the, the right, From the right, right perspective, exactly. you know, the kind of liberal left that wants yeah. to let all these refugees in and so forth. Yeah. But the refugee and migrant issue is, is basically what distinguishes the left and the right. That's what about the issue of wars, for instance, the kind of wars we've seen in Libya, yeah. starting from Afghanistan to Syria at the moment. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is all the wars. Yeah. We have one in Mali, we have yeah. continuing wars in Congo, still yeah. continuing. So what about, is there a clearer understanding of the war? Because a lot of this crisis of, the, of neoliberalism is also connected to the kind of war economy they have built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And certainly the refugee crisis is a direct result. Direct consequence. I think on the left it's, <coughs> it's very clear. Um, on the right, yeah, they don't seem to make the connection at all. I don't know where they think these refugees are coming from, but no, that connection is not made at all. Yeah, Spain mm. is a very interesting, uh, in a very interesting stage of development because mm. we not only have Podemos, but we also have a lot of city-wide movements and some of them very successful run, for instance, in Barcelona. Yeah. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, no, Barcelona is fascinating because uh, they've got, well, they won the city, uh, Barcelona in Comun, which is a coalition of, of left parties. Uh, but they also won, people People don't talk about it as much, but uh, Madrid as well, Valencia. So th there's quite a few really key cities in, in, uh, in Spain uh, which are being run along similar lines. And there's a, uh, this in common, in English could trans translate into in common, but the, the commons economy has become, and that's an interesting new movement in, in Europe as well. We're not, it, it's a broad church, but there's a very strong uh, left dimension. But in Barcelona, you've got um, relatively young feminists running the city now. Uh, they want to decommodify um, food, housing, water, electricity, all these things. To you know, so it's a very radical agenda. They have enormous legitimacy with the population. Uh, last month, they they held a conference, and I know they expected around 150 people, international guests, to come and see. It was to showcase what was going on in Barcelona. And uh, 850 turned up, <clears throat> but from all over the world, you know, mayors from Sudanese cities, right to <clears throat> the city campaign in Cape Town, uh, called up and said, "Can we come?" Uh, so it's it's a it's a magnet for seeing in practice what what could be possible. So it, yeah, I think uh, I think people are very excited by it. You know, uh, that brings us to the issue that. How do you share these experiences with each other? Yeah. How do you share what is happening in Barcelona? There's Barcelona, there is yeah. geography, there is language. Yeah. I hope Transnational Institute will continue its work and bring all of this to the rest of us, who may be denied by the virtue of the fact we don't have a European location or understand Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am looking forward to more of interactions with you, Fiona, and the Transnational Institute, so that we can take this forward. Thank you, Fabio. We intend to. This is all the time we have today in NewsClick. Please keep watching NewsClick for other episodes.